Hello, YouTube. It's Doug from EM Propagation, and I started the concept going in my. I started the concept of doing this video on um, capacitors um, as simple as that topic. Um, um, is in the overall scheme of electronics engineering. Um, it's I've always held the belief that, and I, I guess through being told a million times, um, instructors, whatever, um, go back to basics. And basics for me um, whatever topic um, in electronics that might be. Um, usually I have found that if I don't understand an overall um, uh, 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 view of a device, um, it's probably because I don't have a clear gut feeling for the uh, non-macro aspects of it. Um, and in, in college, university, um, the s speed at which um, you're supposed to grasp all of the con content from your courses and instructors, um, um, I believe it must be getting incredibly difficult with the uh, uh, course load that an engineer today would have to uh, uh, handle. Um, yeah. Uh, so for someone like myself who has lots of spare time uh, both through um, my uh, working career and uh, now that I've been off for a bit um, it uh, is a heck of a lot easier um, to go back and revisit and rehash and test things um, just from a lifelong learner perspective. Um, so I wanted to, I initially came up with the um, topic of capacitors, maybe under an umbrella of, um, I don't know, ideas, um, series, uh, not to take anything away from uh, was it CBC? Uh, of course, I'm a Canuck, so here in Canada, um, Ideas was a, a, a Canadian Broadcasting Corporation um, show. Um, can't remember a lot about it, but it used to come on at night. And um, so, again, call it Ideas in Electronics, call it Ideas in Physics slash Electronics, but um, there you go. Now, to help with the video, or to help with this video, I'm going to use something called Every Circuit. Um, and Every Circuit is a on demand online uh, simulator. Um, which is totally free and accessible from Android um, and Google Chrome, which is how we're going to use it. Uh, you won't see, or at least I haven't seen an app for this um, that exists on your system, I suppose, because it's totally online. However, um, so every circuit and then just pull up every circuit home and oh and for um, iOS as well um, so you can download on the App Store for 
iOS, uh, Google Play, and Chrome. So we are on Chrome um, on my Windows machine. So I'm going to click there and powers up. If you haven't um, logged in, um, yeah, it, it, I don't know. I can't remember if you can use this um, if you don't have an account set up. But it's um, it's quite an interesting um, package um, with its own idiosyncrasies, I suppose. Um, <laughs> like just about all software that uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with. So, okay, so I've got my, um, it opens up to my account. And the last thing I was working on um, was this BST. And I think it's opening, but just have to wait for a second and see. Maybe not. Okay. So I will open it that way. Does that work? Yeah, this is not going to crash on me, is it? Okay, that, no, that's good. Let's do it this way. Ugh. Open already. Uh, okay, let's type it in here. Hunting and pecking capacitance voltage detection detect sends voltage uh. Folks, uh, I wonder. Ah, okay, there we go. Fine. Okay, so what I okay, let me just I'll let that run for a minute while I blab on a little bit. Um, I had been watching various videos, different people on YouTube talking about um, the question, does electric current flow through a capacitor? And um, EV blog Dave Jones uh, in his usual um, Aussie flair um, did a fine job of um, talking about it and lots of others as well um, it's just kind of uh, um, anything that Dave puts out there I typically find it of value um, and although I have a long list of uh, um, uh, video bloggers that I subscribe to um, Dave is one of the uh, one of the best that I've seen. There are there are other, lots of others. Um, given that YouTube is global, um, the uh, hence me here and Dave in uh, the land of the kangaroos. So again, the burning question. I suppose is um, does electric current flow through a capacitor? Hmm. I don't know if I said this initially when I looked 
at it, I said, no, 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 of course not. Electricity cannot flow through plates that are separated from each other. They're blocked. There's no path for DC current. And it, yeah, sorry, this is all based on um, direct current for now. Um, and what I'm saying to you from the from the physics point of view is totally correct. You have an open circuit. You can apply the voltage. The voltage will actually, um, in anything metal, um, the and without current flow, I suppose. Uh, so right now, don't our right now just think of power being applied and the voltage. Uh, very quickly, that's, you know, think of it immediately, appears on the plates of the capacitor. So think of a circuit with a resistor for current limiting and one capacitor. Um, and the voltage, quite sanely, you would say, appears across the plates, the battery voltage. Um, and right now we will uh, ignore dielectrics, uh, but well, till later on in this uh, in this video blog. Um, gee, that's a little bit brainwashing, folks. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> watch the colored lines. <laughs> okay. Anyway, not a comedian. Uh, and, um, and you can tell me that. That's fine. The So we have the charge on, or sorry, we have the voltage existing on the open circuit plates, if you want to think of it that way. And we've got ear in between the plates or the switch. Um, the contacts, however you want to look at it. From a very, um, a very narrow length of time, um, that voltage did not instantaneously appear across the plates, the two metal plates. It actually took time. And I believe the concept is effect at a distance. Um, I don't know, maybe that, that's not it, but okay. Um, I know in a in a movie that um, I watched about uh, I think it was Einstein and Eddington um, where um, things can never happen um, no most definitely not um, affect at a distance um, it, things take time, at least in our universe. So at T0, um, you folks all know, I guess, and can prove, I don't need to do it here, uh, that at time T0, there is no voltage across the plates. The voltage gets applied. Uh, charge flows through the wire, um, moving charges, hence current, 
and current will exponentially um, build up a voltage on the plates uh, with again with the air between the plates as the dielectric um, the dielectric constant for air as we all know is one um, actually for a vacuum it's one but it's close enough to one um, to consider it such so now we have the voltage across the capacitor with the air dielectric now turn your attention if 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 we're not all brainwashed right now or in some kind of uh, dazed state um, looking at the waveform think about how we represent the current in a, in a um, schematic, a circuit, whatever. Uh, hopefully I'm not saying whatever too much, but hey. So the two schools of thought um, that have been um, used in the industry and academia um, sometimes it's um, uh, depending on where you come from if you're from a physics strictly physics or strictly um, engineering um, yeah, it's kind of one and the same but uh, different disciplines have um, different ways of talking about various phenomena so the for for the movement of charges um, it's you talk about conventional current and the conventional current is uh, from the positive terminal of the battery um, out through the load and back to the negative terminal of the battery or source whatever it happens to be now here's the one of the intuitive you know so like simple childish thing but uh, hey that's pretty good um, the um, whether you're dealing with something looking at conventional conventional current uh, which is whole flow um, positive towards negative charges um, as opposed to electron flow which is from the negative charge to the positive charge um, everyone hopefully knows that they are one and the same current and again I hope everyone agrees with it so whether I'm talking about um, you know let, let's me let me just introduce this because you know it may be um, I, I may have to wear armor after I say this and describe it uh, because I'm sure there will be uh, some of you will want to be throwing rocks at me. Um, so what I'm proposing as a way to um, have no ambiguity in understanding capacitors, I would propose that in a capacitor uh, we need to look at both types of current at once and that should be a fairly easy um, concept and we're on one on the say the top plate of the capacitor um, we're in the uh, you know um, in the uh, every circuit simulator 
the charges are accumulating um, as or decreasing or increasing depending on which LED is is on due to the uh, square wave generator. So uh, again on the top plate of the capacitor I've got whole flow which is um, acting to put charge on the plates and I'll get into that now in a sec and the other is electron flow on the bottom and think of the capacitor and you've got one direction of current on the top of it and you got another direction of current on the bottom of it. Two different thought methods um, you could say, oh gee, there's two different currents. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. This is a, this is a simple series circuit. The current is the same in all of it. It, um, it is not, um, going in one direction at one point at one physical location and going in another direction at another physical location. Um, no. Um, what I'm proposing is that the current, think of um, hole flow on the top of the capacitor and electron flow on the bottom of the capacitor. That accomplishes what hopefully we all know about basic capacitors. Basic capacitance is that you supply a source uh, with some uh, whatever internal resistances you have and the charge going into the top and supplied by the circuit to supply charge at the bottom that capacitor will very quickly uh, charge up as shown by the plus and minus on the capacitors all right so This at least allows, well, it allowed me to um, um, come and explain it to you. And of course, when I was initially looking at it, I had been saying in my own head that, no, you cannot. Um, you cannot have a DC current passing through a capacitor. However, um, it kind of has to. In this particular setup that I have here, I have three capacitors and I'll go I'll go over um, that process in a sec. But first, just think of one capacitor, a uh, simple circuit, one capacitor, um, DC source, and you've got whole flow on the top, so you can see charge going in, in one direction, and the electron flow, you'll see charge uh, in the opposite direction. So essentially, charge is being pumped into that um, capacitor. So now the big question becomes, well, okay, um, 
the I've got an air dielectric. Um, as soon as the uh, electric field, which is where all this is uh, going or needs to go, um, the voltage that's applied uh, immediately, that voltage or electric field is available right across the top contact. It's metal, so um, the charge uh, will, um, on a conductive plate, so it will appear um, across the full XY of the uh, dimensions of the plate, uh, top and bottom. But that's not what we're charging up. And this is something that I wanted to bring up. In the case of the open contacts or plates with a vacuum or air in between them, air is the thing that's getting charged up. How fast does that happen? It depends on the capacitance. It depends on the dielectric constant, which for air, again, is 1. And the type, OK, so the, yeah, so the type of dielectric um, Air has a dielectric or a dielectric constant of one. Um, and whether it's an air dielectric or whether the dielectric is a um, polymer or whatever, you know, glass, um, ice, which is really super good um, as far as the dielectric constant goes. Um, not so good for longevity, but um, here's an interesting arrangement or a test, I suppose, for all those, um, for all of the hand on, hands on people out there who do the experiments in this, with this and lots of other things. I can't say that I'm great at that, um, kind of know I'm not in the same way. When it comes to mechanics, I'm uh, uh, mechanical engineering. <laughs> I'm not, uh, not geared that way, I guess. So now we've got air between the capacitor. And the air is a dielectric. And the air is what's being charged from the source. So the air um, does charge very fast. The capacitance, which is based on the area of the plate, the distance between the plates, um, and the dielectric. Uh, so you can see that unless you make a capacitor uh, extremely large, um, the capacitance will be relatively small with that single, with that, just those two plates and here is a dielectric. Um, yeah. Interestingly, a nice test <laughs> might be a dangerous one. I'm not too sure. Um, hmm. Thinking about an ice cube and um, making a capa making a uh, putting a plate on either side of an ice cube 
charging it up make sure the ice is really well frozen and uh, charging it up uh, with uh, something just short of um, ionization or um, um, where the field will break down and so now we've got a um, couple of thousand volts maybe um, with the charge built up in the ice cube take the plates away and again this is uh, quite uh, <clears throat> similar to what happens in a Leyden jar, um, much better described by um, the uh, Wal uh, MIT professor Walter Lewin, and um, what do they do with that? Well, oh, rain. Okay. Hang on. Sorry. Just uh, have to get that on screen for a sec. Uh, what did I do with it? Mm -hmm. Not there. Not there. What did I do with that? Uh, okay, anyway, um, oh, duh, Doug. Okay, so this gentleman here, um, <laughs> if you hadn't had the pleasure of uh, watching, um, his lectures, one or two, a few, uh, all. He actually, um, uh, through MIT, um, you can cover a, uh, a full treatment of um, um, physics in um, electrical, electrostatics, electrodynamics up to and including um, Maxwell's equations. Um, this one is part of that. Um, but towards, if you take note, this is 802x lecture 14. Um, Beyond yeah, Severt, um, Law, um, um, Max, Maxwell's uh, second equation um, and high voltage power lines and then the last thing he does in his lecture is um, Leidinger uh, he calls it revisited because he had in a previous video had shown that you could take the plates if you know the construction of a Leyden jar, um, um, you've got a metal cylinder which sits inside a glass beaker um, and another metal cylinder over the glass beaker so it sits all sits inside of one another again I said that the charge um, is not stored on the metal metal is a conductor it does not store charge charge comes to an equilibrium 
to equilibrium on the surface of a metal surface. Uh, surface of a metal surface. Ah! Um, on a metal surface, um, anytime you put a potential difference, one plate from the other plate, whatever is in between them is what's going to store the charge. Now, an easy way to, I know with the um, basic electronics, uh, they use a water analogy as far as current flowing through uh, wire, uh, having an, uh, having, being a, analogous to, I say that right, analogous to um, water flowing through a water pipe. So in the same vein, you can think of this dielectric that I'm ranting about. And if it helps, it kind of makes sense um, that you could use this analogy. Think of the dielectric as an energy sponge that's going to, as quick as it can, soak up whatever charge you pump into it. So, an energy sponge or a charge sponge, however you want to call it, look at it, whatever. If you don't agree with the um, sponge analogy, that's all right too. Um, when you place some plates, the top and bottom of your energy sponge, that is going to store the electrostatic uh, potential of the charge that you put into it. Okay. And I suppose you could think of um, maybe from, think of the sponges, think of sponges and think of uh, different types of sponges as far as um, how much water they can hold. And you can relate that to some degree uh, with the dielectric constant. Okay, I wanted to come back to the current as far as um, does, elect does electricity flow through a capacitor? Does does charge flow through a capacitor? I suppose the only way that I can uh, show you that it is real is from the capacitor's point of view. In other words, that capacitor wants to see um, current in one direction and the 
up the other side of the plate um, you want to indicate at least that the polarity the, the polarity on the plates shows a potential difference positive on one side negative on the other okay hopefully this is not going to put everyone to sleep it's I think it's putting me to sleep um, so thinking again of one capacitor uh, you can easy, easily think in your head that, okay, the bottom of the capacitor is tied to um, the low side of the battery. Um, the top plate of the capacitor is tied to the positive terminal of the battery. And if you just stick to... Um, conventional current then you can easily draw the current going in uh, the top and coming out the bottom to grasp what the capacitor sees if I'm saying that correctly Put whole current on the top plate, put electron current on the bottom, um, and you'll see quite easily, I think, how the conceptually how the capacitor gets charged up. Okay, one cap, one source. What had me going a little bit um, was when I said, okay, um, yeah, that's all, that's all well and good. Um, in a circuit, in a series circuit like I have here with three caps in series, how does that all work? Well, as you know from um, uh, your theory classes, Kirchhoff's um, voltage law, current law, um, I'm taking three caps in series, putting, putting them essentially across a source. Um, and the voltage of the source um, well, what happens to that? And this is the this is kind of the explanation of uh, what you need to know. Uh, and so, if I'm putting if I put you to sleep already, um, have your spouse or maybe uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever, uh, give you a little pinch. We all know that the voltage, the applied voltage gets split on the three capacitors. So if I have, um, what did I end up using in this one? You know, whatever it happens to be. Um, let's say it's uh, uh, 10 volts, um, or let's say it's 30 volts applied across the whole thing. Then you got 10 volts across each capacitor. And if you look at the um, charge circles that are forming and, and uh, releasing on the plates um, that the polarity of that 10 volt drop on each is from the top we got uh, plus 10 uh, minus 10 um, and 
the next one, essentially, um, you've got the yeah, plus 10, minus 10, or uh, plus 10, plus and, or plus and minus 10. Ah! I don't think I did a good job with that. However, like, um, think of the three capacitors with the 10 volt drops on each. I've created a series chain such that if you look at those 10 volts as independent sources and you join them together, so between the first cap and the second cap from the top down, uh, you've got um, um, you've got the negative plate of the first one joined to the positive plate of the following one. So you got 30 volts applied, 10 volts across each cap, and that is what that 10 volts is what in fact charges each capacitor. And combine that with the whole flow and electron flow on each cap. And you can easily see um, how the dielectrics, whatever they may be, um, whatever dielectric material is being used, is being stored. Some of the, okay, at, at the point, if we're just using a DC source rather than <clears throat> rather than a than a square wave as I have here. Um, once the capacitor has fully charged its dielectric, the current from the DC source stops and so now the capacitor is has stored the maximum amount of energy that it can and so the energy is just one half CV squared um, on and the V is the voltage across the capacitor. So in this case we got um, 10 volts squared which is 100 um, times the capacitance of 1 microfarad. Um, I'm just doing this in my head here but um, so uh, and a half of that. So take, um, leave the hundred, take, so you got 0.5 microfarads, um, 0.5 times 10 to the, 10 to the uh, minus 6, um, times 100, uh, is, Five, four. What's that? Um, point five millijoules on each one. Sorry, I apologize if that uh, calculation didn't uh, get through the clutter in my head. Um, so let's say it was the point five millijoules and that amount of energy is stored on each of those three. And I, I wanted to get into a whole bunch of other stuff as well, but, and I'll try to do that in the next video um, following this one, but I'll, I'll stop it here. If I haven't put everyone to sleep or uh, created zombies uh, from this uh, waveform. Uh, I probably better stop, or I or I will uh, be doing that.
uh, please send me your comments. I'll, I'll reply to any questions uh, or any inferred questions that come out of the comments. And um, subscribe if you want. Uh, hopefully this will be an interesting journey. And um, <laughs> thanks uh, very much.